so, so what, what advice do I have for college graduates? Uh, certainly, I'd invite you to uh, apply for a job at uh, SolarCity or Tesla or SpaceX. Um, and uh, if not, then um, if, if, if that doesn't work for whatever reason, then uh, apply to jobs at other companies in that arena or uh, try starting a company. If, if you study engineering and, and you figure out how to design new things, um, then um, it's relatively easy to start a company. Um, you just need to get a few like-minded people um, with you. Although I have to say that the space business is, is quite it's quite hard to start a company in the space business because it's such a capital-intensive business. So it may be better to do something in um, solar power, or uh, if you're going to do it in cars, do it in as kind of a component supplier for cars or something like that. Musk has college degrees in business and physics, but SpaceX is his first venture in aerospace. How did you get the expertise to be the chief technology officer of a rocket ship company? Um, well, I do have a physics background. That's helpful as a foundation. Um, and then I read a lot of books and talked to a lot of, a lot of smart people. Don't just follow the trend. You may have heard me say that it's good to think in terms of the physics approach of first principles, uh, which is, Rather than reasoning by analogy, you boil things down to the most fundamental truths you can imagine and you reason up from there. And this is a good way to figure out if, if, if something really makes sense or if it's just what everybody else is doing. It, it, it's hard to think that way. You can't think, think that way about everything. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, but if you're trying to do something new, it's the best way to think. Um, and that framework was developed by, by physicists to figure out counterintuitive things like quantum mechanics. So it's really a powerful, powerful method. And I want to know, what is the one thing that has surprised you about your life? Well, I certainly, I'm surprised about the whole thing, honestly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I certainly didn't expect to be, to be uh, for any of these things to happen, honestly. Um, yeah, I, I just, you know, <laughs> I knew I wanted to be involved in technology, um, and uh, in fact, the only reason I started a company back in '95, an internet company, was because I couldn't get it. There were only a few internet companies, and I couldn't get a job at any of them. <laughs> so there, um, I tried to get a job at, at Netscape um, and uh, sent my resume in and tried hanging out in the lobby, but I was too shy to talk to anyone. And, uh, and then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll have to start a company because I can't get a job anywhere. <laughs> Thank you. I wouldn't say I'm fearless. In fact, I, I think I, fear, I feel fear quite strongly. Uh, but I, um, if, the, if, if what we're doing is, if what, what, you know, what I'm doing is, I think is important enough, then I just uh, override the fear. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not as though I don't feel, I feel like more strongly than I would like. I think also people tend to overweight risk um, on a personal level. It's one thing if you've got, you know, a mortgage to pay and kids to support, and that if you were to deviate from your job, that well, how are you going to feed your family and pay the rent? And okay, that's understandable. But let's say you're young and you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school or whatever. The what? What do you? What do you risk? You know, you're not going to starve. I mean, right. it's it's really certainly not in any kind of modern economy. It's, it's so easy to earn enough money just to live somewhere and eat food. I don't know what you know, what are they what are they afraid of? They're they're mostly afraid of uh, failure, I think. People should be be less risk averse when there's not much at risk. What is education? Like you're basically downloading data and algorithms into your brain. And it's, it's, it's actually amazingly bad in conventional education. Because like it shouldn't be like this huge chore. Like the more you can gamify the, uh, the process of learning, the better. I was at sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out 
what does it all mean? Like, what's the purpose of things? And um, I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the, 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 the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened. And, and that's really the only way forward. What drives you? What, what is it that when you wake up in the morning, do you see a problem and you want to solve it? Uh, the thing that uh, drives me is that uh, I want to be able to think about the future and uh, you know, feel good about that. Um, so uh, that uh, you know, we're doing what we can to uh, have the future be, be as good as possible. Um, to be inspired by what is likely to happen um, and to look forward to the next day. Um, so that's that's what really really drives me is is, is trying to figure out uh, how do we how to make sure that things are great and, um, and going to be so and um, that's the underlying principle behind uh, Tesla and SpaceX um, is that um, I think it's, it's it's pretty important that we accelerate the transition to uh, sustainable generation and consumption of energy. Um, it, it's inevitable, but it's, it matters if, we ha if it happens sooner or, or later. Um, and then SpaceX is about um, helping make life multi-planetary um, and doing what we can to continue the, the dream of Apollo. Um, and ultimately make a contribution to life becoming multi-planetary. Well, let's talk a little more about that. I think uh, everyone very interested in that when you say making life multi-planetary. Yeah. That's exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so what's I mean, your vision there? You know, um, I think, you know, particularly for uh, Americans, you know, like you think about America is a nation of explorers. Uh, people came here from other parts of the world that, you know, uh, chose to give up the known in favor of the unknown. Um, so I think uh, exploration, like <clears throat> I think the United States is a, is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. Um, and uh, so that's why it, it appeals to Americans so much. You know, um, you can see this when, say there was a shuttle tragedy um, and seven people died. And that's, that's terrible, but you know, a lot of people die all the time. Um, but, but why do we care so much? Because it was the dream of exploration that was dying uh, along with those people. That's why. I mean, I thought both Tesla and SpaceX would fail at the beginning. You, you saw it? Yeah, so, sure. Really? Of course. But nevertheless, you put all your money in that. Both. I expected to lose it. Uh, well, technically, <laughs> what I, I thought was, well, I'll take half the money from PayPal and if I lose half of it, that's okay. Um, uh, but then, of course, the companies encounter difficulties, and then I have a choice of either the, let the company die um, or put, in, you know, all the money into the companies. And so, I really didn't want the companies to die, so I put all the money in the companies. Yeah. And then I had to borrow money from friends to pay living expenses. Yes. You know, just re looking just for evidence of exceptional ability, um, and if there's a track record of exceptional achievement, then it's likely that that will continue into the future. Mm -hmm. Well, it really depends on the stakes. If the stakes are high, if, if it's really important, then what should then I you know will overcome the fear and just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, I mean, I just drive override fear, but I feel the fear. It's kind of annoying. I wish I, didn't, okay. I, wish I felt it less. Uh -huh.